Hello and welcome to this kangaroo math contest review session. Today the topic is counting and we're going to be covering a little bit of theory before moving on to solving some problems. Now one of the most important concepts to be familiar with when considering counting problems is the so-called additive principle. This principle states that if there are m ways for an event that we call a to occur and n disjoint ways for an event that we call b to occur, then the event A or B can occur in M plus N ways. Now, the use of the word disjoint here signifies that the event A can occur or the event B can occur, but not both. Now, this principle is most easily understood through examples, so let's do a quick example to get a feel for it. If I ask, how many two-digit numbers have the first digit 3 or 5? We might break this into separate events and consider how many times does the A or B occur. So let's call event A the event where the first digit of our number is a 3. There are 10 different ways for a two-digit number to have the digit 3 as its first digit because there are 10 such numbers, namely 30, 31, and so on, all the way up to 39. Secondly, let's call the event B the event where the first digit of our number is a 5. There are also 10 ways for this to occur because once again, there are 10 numbers where the first digit is a five, namely 50, 51, and so on. So the total number of ways for A or B to occur is the sum of the number of ways for each individual event to occur, which in this case is 10 plus 10 equals 20 ways. A second important principle to know when considering counting problems is the multiplicative principle. This principle states that if there are m ways for an event which we call a to occur, and for each way that a can occur, there are n ways that the event b can occur, then the event a and b can occur in m times n ways. So now notice that we're no longer asking that these events be disjoint, because in particular we want to know how many times do they both happen simultaneously. We can cover a quick example to get a feel for this principle as well. If I ask how many two digit numbers are there that are composed only of odd digits? Well, we can call the event A the event where the first digit of our number is odd. And we notice that there are five different ways for this to occur because there are five possible odd digits, namely one, three, five, seven, and nine. Similarly, we're going to call the event B the event where the second digit of our number is odd. There are also five ways for this to occur because once again, there are five choices for the digit. And so the multiplicative principle tells us that the event A and B has 25 different ways of occurring because five times five is 25. So there are 25 different two digit numbers that are composed only of odd digits. We're now ready for the first question. Now this question asks, each digit, starting from the third one from left to right, in the decimal representation of a six-digit number, is equal to the sum of the two preceding digits. How many six-digit numbers possess this property? Now, the first thing we can do is label the first and second digits of our number by A and B, and then compute what are the other digits based on these previous digits. So we call the first digit A, and the second digit b, and then we know that each other digit is the sum of the two preceding ones. So for example, the third digit is going to be a plus b, the fourth digit is going to be a plus b plus b, which is a plus 2b, and similarly we can compute that the fifth digit is 2a plus 3b, and the sixth digit is 3a plus 5b. Now notice that the first digit, a, cannot be 0. This is because if the leftmost digit of our number was zero, then it would not actually be a six digit number, it would be a five digit number, because a number can't start with the digit zero. Now every other digit must be between zero and nine to actually be a decimal digit. And also notice that each digit is less than the next one. So in particular, B is less than A plus B, which is less than A plus two B, which is less than 2a plus 3b, which is less than 3a plus 5b. So if we're asking that all of these digits be less than or equal to 9, 
it's sufficient to just know that 3a plus 5b is less than or equal to 9, because then we know for sure that every other digit is also less than or equal to 9 because they're all less than 3a plus 5b. So the answer to our question will be exactly the number of integer solutions to the equation 3a plus 5b is less than or equal to 9, subject to a greater than 0 and b greater than or equal to 0. So, okay, we must find the number of integer solutions to 3a plus 5b less than or equal to 9, subject to a greater than 0, b greater than or equal to 0. Now, notice that if b were greater than or equal to 2, then 3a plus 5b, which is greater than or equal to 5b, would actually be greater than or equal to 10, because we would have 5 times 2 equals 10. And 10 is definitely not less than or equal to 9. So what this tells us is if b is anything greater than or equal to 2, then we're not going to have any integer solutions to this equation. So that means that b has to be 0 or 1. So let's consider both cases, and then we'll use the additive principle to count the total number of uh, possible solutions. So if b equals 0, the values of a that satisfy 3a plus 5b less than or equal to 9 are 1, 2, and 3. Because we can easily check that if we plug in a equals 1, 2, or 3 here, and b equals 0, we will get something that's less than or equal to 9. But if you put a equals 4, 5, or anything greater, then you will get something bigger than 9 here. Next, if we suppose b equals 1, we'll find that the only possible value of a is 1, because if a is anything bigger than 1, we're going to have on the left-hand side here something bigger than 9. So, okay, we found that if b equals 0, there are three solutions to this equation, and if b equals 1, there is one solution to this equation. So we can use the additive principle. If we call event A the event where b equals 0, we see that there are three cases where the event A occurs. And if event B is the event where b equals 1, then there is one case where event B occurs. So the total number of cases where A or B occurs is 1 plus 3 equals 4. So the answer to our question is D. Let's now move on to the second question, which asks, how many are the 10 digit numbers composed only of 1, 2, and 3, in which the difference between any two adjacent digits is 1? Now let's begin our solution. The choices for each digit are either 1, 2, or 3, because that's what we're told in the question. Now, we're asked to find numbers such that the difference between any two adjacent digits is 1. So our first step is identifying which differences between the numbers 1, 2, and 3 give 1. Now, 3 minus 2 equals 1, and 2 minus 1 equals 1 and any other combination of differences between 1, 2, and 3 does not give 1. So what this tells us is, if we have a digit 1 or a digit 3, it must be adjacent only to the digit 2. And if we have a digit 2, it must be adjacent only to the digits 1 or 3. So let's start by considering the case when the first digit of our number is a 2. In this case, our 10 digits might look something like this. Now, the first digit is a 2, and we said that the next digit has to be a 1 or a 3, next to that has to be a 2, then a 1 or a 3, and so on, alternating all the way to the end. So if we want to count how many different such numbers are there, we simply use the multiplicative principle. We have two choices for the second digit, two choices for the fourth digit, two choices for the sixth digit, two for the eighth, and finally two for the tenth digit. This gives a total of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 32 different choices. And next we need to consider the case where the first digit of our number is not a 2, but a 1 or a 3. We'll get a very similar picture, but this time the first digit is a 1 or a 3, then it's followed by a 2, and we have the same repeating pattern. And once again we'll find that we have 2 to the power of 5 different such numbers, because we have two choices five times. 
So we have 32 choices when the first digit is a 2, and 32 choices when the first digit is a 1 or a 3. So we use the additive principle here to add 32 plus 32 and get 64 different possible numbers. So the answer to our question is C, 64. We're now ready for our third and final question, which asks, how many three-digit positive integers have the property that their tens digit is the average of the other two digits? Now, to begin our solution, let's denote the three digits of our number by A, B, and C. Now what we're asking is that the tens digit, which is B, is the average of the other two digits. So what that means is B equals A plus C divided by two. If we multiply on both sides of this equation by two, we see that we get 2B equals A plus C. And we notice that the left-hand side of this equation, 2B, is always even. So because this is equality, the right-hand side must also always be even. Now, if A plus C is even, then both A and C have to be of the same parity. This is because an odd number plus an even number is an odd number. However, even plus even is still even, and odd plus odd is even as well. So if A plus C is to be even, then A and C are either both odd or both even. Now, there are nine choices for the digit A, namely one, two, three, and so on, all the way up to nine, which are the nine different possible choices for the digit A. And once again, notice that we cannot have A being zero, because that would be saying that the first digit of our number is zero, which as we saw in the first problem is not possible. Now, for each choice of A, there are five choices of C, which are of the same parity as A. For example, if A is even, then these are 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. If A is odd, these are 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So this is the perfect situation to use the multiplicative property because we have 9 choices for A, and for each choice of A, there are 5 possible choices for B. So by the multiplicative property, the total number of choices is 9 times 5 equals 45 possible combinations of A and C, such that A plus C equals 2B. So we see that the answer to this question is E, 45. This concludes this review session. Thank you very much for listening.